Well, good morning. Welcome, welcome. I know a lot of folks uh, are probably staying home because of COVID that's going on. Uh, down where I live, I heard this morning a number of churches have canceled. They're going back to online services uh, because of the, uh, the large number of COVID cases that are around. And so, you know, everybody's just got to be careful. It's, it's good to see you all with your masks on. That's, I think that's a smart move. Um, and so, uh, but it's good to see you. Thanks for coming this morning. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, one is, for those of you who are church leaders, um, I've handed out to most of you, at least this morning, uh, position descriptions. The church asked me to write position descriptions for all of our leadership roles uh, about a year or two ago. And so they're in a book, and they're not doing any good for anybody if they're sitting in a book. So in January, I try to hand them out to everybody. And what I'm going to ask you to do is two things. One is this kind of gives you an idea of what you're supposed to be doing. You know, we're very famous in the church, all churches. We ask somebody if they'll do something in the church, and they say, sure, I'll do it. And then we don't tell them what to do. And then they get frustrated because they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And so this is a job description. I'm going to ask you to look at it and also to review it to see if it needs to be updated. You all are the ones that are in these positions. If there's anything that needs to be changed in them, let's change it and let's keep it up to date. So just let me know, no rush, whenever you get to it. And then in January of next year, we'll just hand them out again and we'll just continue to do that so that they're kind of updated and give us a better idea of what we're doing. Um, so that's why I was handing them out this morning. Also, I wanted to um, let you know that we're going to receive a love offering for Ruth Packett this morning. Um, Stanley uh, was at Tappahannock Hospital, and they moved him to VCU, and VCU said the only bed they have is in their hospital in Newport News. And so that's where he's been for the last few days. It's a four-hour trip, round trip, for, for Ruth to go visit, and she's visiting every day. They have a room at the hospital, but with COVID and all that, she didn't want to stay there, and I don't blame her, you know. So... Um, uh, Stanley seems to be doing a little bit better. They've taken him off the respirator now. It took three tries, but he's off the respirator now. And um, he's still got infection. He's still got pneumonia. He's still got blood clots. Um, and so uh, his kidneys were shutting down, but they seem to stabilize a little bit. So he's still not out of the woods. And so he's probably going to be there a while. So what we want to do is, um, if, you, if you feel so inclined, you know, we have our offering plate in the back. Next to the offering plate is a basket. If you would like to leave a donation in that basket, we'll make sure that Ruth gets that, and that'll help her with the gas and meals and all that as she's going back and forth. I got a feeling it's going to be going on for a while. So just want to let you know that, and, and we wanted to uh, give you an opportunity to share that. Uh, we also have, um, we're gathering canned food. I really appreciate all that our United Methodist women are doing in ministry and mission. Even in the midst of all the COVID, you're all still doing projects and mission projects because, you know, even though we have COVID and people are ill, the need doesn't go away, does it? So thank you for being faithful and for doing that. A couple of the quick announcements. Um, our trustees will meet today. I've got it scheduled at one o'clock. Um, I will try to be back. I try to be back by 1230. So I put one o'clock to be safe. But if you all want to meet and start meeting before I get there, that's fine. Instead of just waiting, you can kind of catch me up when I get there, so that'd be fine. Um, our women's Bible study is Tuesday night, and next Sunday is our church leader consecration Sunday. So if you're in a leadership role in the church, uh, we hope that you'll try to be here um, for that. And our church council will meet at 1 o'clock next Sunday. So we've got a, few, a handful of things coming up. Are there any other announcements that anyone is aware of? Well, let us stand together and join together for our call to worship. You'll find it printed in the bulletin, and it will be on the screen, and we'll read it responsively. <clears throat> Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. We can hear the brush of angels' wings. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Our opening hymn is number 61, Come Thou Almighty King. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4, and it will also be on the screen.
Father, it's so good to be in your house this morning. We know it's a dark and dreary and rainy day, but Lord, we know that you have called us to come and to gather in this place as your church, as your family, to gather together and to join our hearts and our minds together during this hour and simply to praise you. So Lord, as we have gathered this morning, we pray that your spirit will lead us and guide us during our time together. Show us how to praise you. Show us how to worship you. And in all that we do, Lord, it is our goal and our desire to simply lift up your holy name in this place today. So come and lead us now, for it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I guess when it burst into flames, we would have seen it. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's pretty hot. <laughs> I wanted to remind you, as I did a moment ago, about our uh, tithes and offerings. And we, we appreciate you so much with supporting the church and giving to God. We, uh, the offering plate, as I said, is on the right, on the outside, uh, in the foyer, and um, we just appreciate so much giving to God, part of the blessing that God has given to us, and what a joy it is to be able to give to him. Well, I have a note that I wanted to read to you that I received this week. It says, Dear Providence members, I appreciate you remembering me, and I thank you for the beautiful and delicious fruit basket that Stephanie delivered. We had an enjoyable visit. Sure hope she can visit again soon. I'll be enjoying lots of fruit salad as well as all the other goodies in the basket. I miss church and being with you for church events. Thank the Lord for TV worship, <laughs> for the home, TV worship for the homebound. Love and blessings, your oldest member, and, uh, and she... Uh, she uh, has gotten hooked up with our videos and she watches our videos of the service every week at home. And so, uh, B, when you're watching this, thank you for that note. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, take a few moments now. Let's join our hearts together as we spend some time in prayer with our God. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And as we have launched into a new year, Lord, we are so thankful that you are the God of heaven and earth and that you inhabit eternity, but that you also chose to come and dwell among us. You're not just the God that's out there somewhere, but you are a God who is with us and you are a God who is within us. Your word tells us that every day you stand at the door of our hearts and knock. And when we open the door, you come in and live within us. Now, Lord, we've got to admit that we can't even begin to understand that. But we thank you for making it possible. And we thank you for your abiding presence. And Lord, on this first Sunday of 2022, it's good to be together in fellowship with you and with each other in this particular body of believers. And as we have ended another year this past week, we thank you for being with us each day of 2021. As we said a moment ago, Lord, there was never a moment during this past year that you were not by our side, leading us, guiding us, and directing our every move. You blessed us anew every day. And because of you, we have come to know what it means to live in your kingdom, to live in communion with you, and to know the power and presence of your Holy Spirit at work in our lives. And so as we come to this new year, Lord, we pray for moms and dads and grandparents. People are watching the way we live our lives day after day. There are little people whose lives are being shaped and molded by our words, our attitudes, and our actions. And we know, Lord, that there are hassles and problems and frustrations that sometimes cause us to act in ways that are less than godly. So today, Lord, we acknowledge our everyday need for your presence and for the gentle promptings of your Holy Spirit to help us be what we need to be. And Lord, we pray for our teens and young people. They face daily pressures from their peers and from society on every hand. 
Lord, help them to make the right choices and to take the high road in all that they do. And help us to uphold them in prayer and by our words of encouragement. Lord, we also pray for our own little children. We are so thankful for the Christian training they're receiving at home from their moms and dads as your word is planted in their hearts and minds. Father, we thank you for our people here who are so dedicated to taking the children to Sunday school each week or on the first Sunday of every month for now. And we thank you for their dedication and for the difference they are making in the lives of our children. And Lord, many of our children have already accepted you and, and we pray that they will continue to grow up to be godly men and women. Lord, there are some among us today who have special needs and there are others who need your special touch and reassurance right now. We pray today that their faith in you will never fail and that you will bring healing and reconciliation to them today and every day of their lives. Lord, we also pray for our nation and for our leaders. What awesome responsibilities they face every day. And we ask, Lord, that you will give them wisdom and guidance every day and make and, and may they learn to depend upon you in all of the situations that are so critical and vital to all of us. We also pray for our military, many of them who are in harm's way even today. And we pray for peace in all the troubled spots of the globe, that people will turn to you and be healed. So Lord, we thank you for, our pres- for your presence in our service today and for hearing our prayers. Lord, our faith and our confidence are in you and in you alone. And we know beyond any doubt that you will never fail. And so we pray all of this today in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 What a wonderful song for the beginning of a new year. We can face a new year because we have been redeemed. Amen. Something I meant to mention earlier, if you notice the the color scarf, isn't that beautiful? On the thing, and the stole that matches. And it even says pastor on the bottom, as if anybody was wondering, you know. But uh, uh, Brad, as you know, Brad's a pilot and he's been flying to Africa lately. He had this all handmade in Ghana, and the people in Ghana made this for us, and Brad brought it back. And he's been doing a lot of work with schools and stuff when he's in Ghana, and, um, and so then they, they made this for us and sent it back here, and I just think it is so beautiful, and, and I know you appreciate it. It adds some, so much color to the front, and, um, and I thought it was just funny that it said pastor on the bottom on both sides of the, of the thing, but I am not complaining one bit. I think it's gorgeous, and, and, and we are so blessed to receive this wonderful gift from the people in Ghana uh, through Brad. Yes. I want to share a scripture with you this morning. It comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. It's a story that you've probably heard over and over again, but it's good to read it again this morning. So uh, let's hear the word of God from Matthew 25, beginning at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. 
I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty or give you something to, to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I, I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the one, of the one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, yesterday, on New Year's Day, we marked the end of the Christmas holiday. Yep, the holidays are officially over, and a new year has begun, and we are finally able to get back to our normal everyday schedules, or as much normal as we can get right now. And you know, for many people, the beginning of a new year is a time for a fresh start. It's a time to start over. It's a time to make the changes that they've been thinking about for a while. And I had a friend of mine said the other day, he said, I'm going to open up a, a gym called the, the, Res the Resolutions Gym. And I said, really? He said, yeah, we're going to have workout equipment in there for the first couple of weeks. Then we'll turn it into a donut shop, you know? <laughs> yeah. But the beginning of a new year is also a good time to look back and to take an assessment of all that has happened during this past year, of all that we've done, of all that we've been able to accomplish. But I think even more important than that, that's always a good thing to do, but something that's even more important to th than that is I believe New Year's is a good time to reflect how during the past year, God has been at work in our lives. It's a good time to take an assessment of that. It's a good time to look at how during the past year, God has blessed us. He's uplifted us. He has sustained us. And he's even carried us during those times when we didn't think we could even make it. And as I said earlier, we are here today, not because we're, we're strong, good people, although we are, but that's not why we're here. We're here today. We're here today because of God. We're here today because our God has brought us through this year. Our God has brought us through everything we've had to face. And we are, we are standing upright <laughs> on January 2nd because God has given us all that we need in order to do that. And so I hope that as we begin a new year, you will take some time to look back and to reflect on all of this. And maybe even if you really want an interesting exercise, Prayerfully make a list of all that God has done for you during 2021. And when you do, you'll be amazed at how long that list will become. And, you, and making a list, or at least just realizing it and thinking about it, will help us better realize that God indeed has walked with you through the entire year. How his love and his grace has seen you through everything. But I think it's also important to do this because we as Christians, we need to be careful and we need to guard against becoming complacent about our faith. And that's easy to do. And I got a feeling you, like me, have done that at times, you know? We come to church every Sunday and we, we work hard to serve the church and we're, we're so involved in the church that if we're not careful, it will become work for us. Or if we're not careful, I know you may not be able to relate to this, the church will become a hobby, just working in the church and doing things around the church. And as a result, our faith 
can very easily, if we're not careful, become more about working in the church and less about serving Jesus Christ. And what happens then is we end up losing our excitement and our vitality for our faith. And I don't mind telling you, this is a, this is a, a problem in the job for pastors. This is a problem for pastors. We have to guard against this all the time. We're working in the church. We're serving God's people. We're doing all this stuff every day. And before you know it, we end up becoming all about the church and we lose sight of the fact that we don't work for the church. We work for God. And that we're serving God's people through the power of God and it ends up, if we're not careful, just being another job. And that can be a real problem for us. Yet we all, every one of us, we have fallen into this trap at one time or another. When our faith becomes so routine, when we just kind of get used to it all, you know, and that is why periodically we need to take some time to refocus and to intentionally think about God's presence in our lives. And when we do this and we think about our relationship, not with the church, but with God, we will find that we get excited about God all over again. We realize how God is so powerful and mighty, how he is so loving and caring for us every single day. And when we realize that, we cannot help but fall in love with God all over again in fresh and new ways. And then when that happens, we find that we become driven. We, that we need to, that we must share that love and that grace and all that God has done for us through loving service to, to others. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, in a passage today, Jesus tells his disciples back then, and, and I think he's telling us exactly today too, that whatever we do in loving service for the least, the last, and the lost, we are actually doing for him. You know, Jesus emphasized throughout his ministry that true evidence of our faith is in maintaining our relationship with God and then, after that, manifesting our love for him through loving service. Now, let's not misunderstand what I'm saying today, okay? Let, let's make sure we clarify this, this right up front. The message today is not some subtle message to try to get you to do more in the church for 2022, that has nothing absolutely to do with it, okay? I'm also, not also, I'm also not talking about trying to do good things for the sake of our salvation. I talked to somebody, you know, they th thinking we can earn our way into heaven. I, I talked to, per to a person just this past week who was telling me about doing good things and he's making New Year's resolutions. And he said, you know, I want to do all these things because, you know, I got to make sure I get into heaven one day and I almost had a heart attack, you know. And it was like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not where we go for this. And so I, I tried to be very nice because I didn't want to insult him or, or to, to tell him that he doesn't get it. You know, I didn't want to do that. But what we talked about then for a few moments was, are all the good things we do, is that what gets us into heaven? And you've heard me say before, and I, I shocked you one time in a message, and I said, I'm your pastor, and I'm not concerned about whether you get into heaven or not. Remember me saying that? You probably will never forget your pastor saying that to you. And what I'm saying is, my concern is your everyday relationship with God. Why do we have to work hard to get something down the road when we can experience it right now today? And that is kingdom living. And so we're not doing things to get into heaven. My concern as your pastor, my goal is to help you understand your relationship with God right now. To enjoy him every day, to walk in his presence, to walk in his strength. And when you're doing that... The Bible clearly tells us heaven's a done deal. We don't need to worry about it. So I'm not worried about whether you're getting into heaven or not. I'm, I'm worried, about, not worried, but I'm concerned about how is your relationship with God today? Are you enjoying him? Are you relying on him? Because when we do, heaven's a done deal. But this person this week, I'm not sure if he actually got it or not. And, and, and that's okay. Maybe he'll think about it, you know. And you know, what I'm talking about this morning is starting a new year by taking time to renew our faith relationship with God. That's really all I'm talking about. And through that faith relationship, 
allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and light that fire again and get us all fired up all over again about who and what God means to each of us. And then, after that, you see, then because we love our God, because we're excited about God, because we really want to serve him, then getting out into this community and sharing the love of God with others. Getting out around where you go in your jobs and in your social activities and, and when you're in shopping and that kind of thing. Being the hands and feet of Jesus and letting God's love flow through us to everyone we meet. That's what we're talking about today. You know, I've often wondered, I've wondered quite a bit actually, how can we as Christians love our God? How can we experience God in our lives every day? How can we be set free from the bondage of sin and death? How can we know that we are forgiven and healed and that we have eternal life for him and then not be sharing that good news and love with other people? How can we have something so magnificent and awesome in our lives and that we want to keep it quiet, that we don't want to share? Jesus Christ is the greatest thing that's ever happened to you and me, bar none. And he is the greatest gift we have ever received. And how can we experience it and keep it to ourselves? And the answer to that question is this, we can't. We can't. And that's what loving service is all about. About not being able to keep quiet and not being able to be shut down. It's all about overflowing with the love of God and the joy of our salvation and then sharing that good news with everyone we know. You know, and it's not, and, and this is one of my favorite sayings about this, it's not going down to the Bible bookstore, buying the biggest Bible you can find and then beating people up with it. That's not evangelism. I call that religious abuse, <laughs> you know. Sharing our faith, sharing that love of God is, yes, when we get an opportunity to talk about it, by all means, but to live it and to let people see Jesus in us. Because, you know, there's an old saying, how does it go? Um, we, some, for some people, we are the only Jesus they will ever see or something like that. That may not be right, but that's close. You know, it, that's all, what it's all about. It's about being the hands and feet of Jesus, being a source of love and support to other people and letting them see that love. And, and maybe, just maybe, they'll say, hey, why is it that you're doing this? And then you say, oh, I'm so happy you asked. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. But as I said earlier, we've got to be careful about why we serve other people. And as I talked to this gentleman this past week, I, I hear people saying all the time, you know, I'm doing this and that, I'm helping other people because I want to get in heaven one day, or I'm doing this and I'm helping people because if I don't do this, God's going to be mad at me, you know, or I come to church every Sunday because that's what I'm supposed to do. Well, let me ask you this, or let me just say this. If you are serving God, if you are coming to church every Sunday, if you were doing all these other things we've talked about in the name of Jesus because there's a requirement to do so or because you have to or because you're looking to gain something in the future, then you got it all backwards. Yeah. Then you're doing all the right things for all the wrong reasons. You see, our for salvation, our forgiveness, our enjoyment of God every day and eternal life with him does not come by how much we do or by what we do. Our salvation and our freedom, our forgiveness and our kingdom living comes only through God's grace and only through us in faith believing, accepting his gift of salvation and then dedicating our lives to him, trusting in him for all that we have all that we are, and all that we do. And then, because we believe, and because we love him, and because we know that we are loved, then we are set free to be able to serve others, not out of a sense of responsibility, but out of our love for God, because we're allowing God's grace and love to flow through us in loving service. And oh, do the people in our society today need to see love. Yeah. See, that's why we're talking about this today. That's why each of us needs to stop once in a while 
and take an assessment of who God is to us and to be reminded of his love for us. And I think, I think uh, the beginning of a new year is just kind of a perfect time to do that. But I think we also need to talk about what is this loving service that we're, that we're talking about this morning? How do we do that? Well, we've already alluded to that some, but I think a good example of loving service was Mother Teresa. She's a perfect example. For almost all of her adult life, she walked through the filthy streets of Calcutta to find children in need and provide them with food and shelter and love. A simple woman of faith who gave her life in service to the least of these. She didn't do it to get into heaven. She didn't do it to try to earn her salvation. Mother Teresa served others because she loved her God. She served others because she realized the goodness of God in her life. And because of that, she wanted to share it with others. You see, true faith, true love is meaningless unless we put that faith in love into action. What's the old saying? Love isn't love until we give it away. Yeah. True faith and love for Christ is a whole lot more than, than sitting in church for an hour on Sunday morning. It's more than we hope to receive in return. No, true faith and love means giving it to others and also sharing it with others because of our love for our God. Now, I know that you have jobs and families and obligations. You don't have a whole lot of time to do very much. A friend of mine used to say, man, I got more to do than I can say grace over. You ever hear that saying? Yeah. But you know, lo the loving service we're talking about today is not a matter of how much time you have. It's not m things to do, to add to your to-do list or to, to add to your, <clears throat> excuse me, your responsibilities. What we're talking about today is simply a way of life. It's a way of giving to others what God has given to us. It's a matter of love and compassion and caring in all that we do. And as I said earlier, it all begins with realizing how much we are loved and blessed. It all begins by looking inwardly and realizing what God has done for us. And then simply saying, Lord, I love you so much that I want to share you with others. Use me. Work through me. Bless me so that I can be a blessing to others in whatever ways I can. Friends, I believe there can be no better way to begin a new year than to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to realize how much we are loved by our God. Ask the Holy Spirit to wake us up to all that God is doing in our lives and to help us to resolve, to make a New Year's resolution, if you will, that in 2022, we will share that love with others, not just with family, not just with friends, not just with people like us, but with everyone. Friends, as you face a new year, full of promises and blessing. Realize how much God loves you. Rejoice and praise God for his love and his blessings on you. Then boldly stand up and face a new year unafraid. Go into this community with a heart overflowing with love. Friends, let's make 2022 the year when we, the Church of Jesus Christ, literally turn the world upside down with the love and grace of Jesus Christ, let this be a year when we take that to others through loving service. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for reminding us of our relationship with you. Lord, we admit, sometimes we become so complacent. Sometimes it becomes just so easy to not worry about you and just go along our lives and think, man, I'm really smart. I'm really a good person. Look at all the good things I'm doing. And oh, I just have such good luck. When we forget, Lord, many times, and it's so easy to do, we forget that it's because of your strength. It's because of your power. <laughs> it's because of you messing around in our lives every day that we're able to do what we do, that we're able to enjoy life, that we're able to love. Lord, give us the time, give us the courage to take a few moments to do that assessment of our love for you and, and, and especially of your love for us. 
And through that, may we come to know you better. May we come to know you in a new and different way. May we realize just how much we are loved and then empower us to go out into this community in loving service and to show others your love as well. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. What a wonderful opportunity we have this morning to share in this gift of Holy Communion. Now, we we are using little things, the little cups. Does everyone have one? Does anyone not have one? Let me ask you that. Well, we gather as our tradition, we gather on the first Sunday of each month to celebrate this gift of Holy Communion. And it's a wonderful gift from God that reminds us of who God is and what he does for us, and and I think it reminds us of everything we've talked about this morning, but it goes further than that. It goes further than just reminding us. We believe that Holy Communion, we call it a means of grace, which means uh, that God uses this gift of Holy Communion to provide his grace to us. So it's not just the symbolism or what it reminds us of, it's literally his grace coming down on us in a very special way. Sometime, I know with me, it's, there's been times when I've been receiving communion in a church where it was like, okay, uh, this was Holy Communion. It was nice. I enjoyed it. And there were other times when I have felt the power of his Holy Spirit so powerfully and so strong. So it's not always a, a mountaintop experience, you know, but God does reach out to us. God does pour out his grace upon us, whether we realize it or not. During this, And just knowing that can make such a difference. Just knowing that can, can, let, can, can help us to realize how much God really does love us. I'm waiting to see if the kids are coming up here. But as we gather around his table in our own way this morning, we come to experience Christ and to experience his love for us. And so as you, as you kind of go into this time of Holy Communion, think about that. Let the Holy Spirit kind of prepare your mind and open your heart up to receiving God's love. Because Holy Communion really is all about God. It's about God coming to us and giving us his grace. And our role in it is to simply respond to God in love and to receive his grace. And then, as we've said before, it it isn't all about just what we get. Then to use that experience of receiving his love and his grace to empower us to go out and to share it with others. So it's a wonderful, wonderful gift that we receive. And so if you remember, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he was in the upper room with his disciples, and he took the bread and he held it in front of them and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the meal was over, what was their tradition at the time is that they would share the meal and then they would pass the common cup. And he held the cup in front of his disciples before he passed it and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood shed for you, the blood of the new covenant, my death and resurrection. He didn't explain it exactly this way, but basically he was saying my death and resurrection so that you can receive forgiveness of your sins and new life. This is one of the greatest gifts we ever receive, the gift of Holy Communion, the gift of God's grace. Let's pray together for a moment. Father, we come to you this morning as we've gathered around this holy table, and we come thanking you and praising you for your love for us. And Lord, we've talked about it all morning, how you have been with us for every moment of every day in the past year, and we know that you're walking with us now. And that you will continue to give us all that we need. Because of that, Lord, we just cannot express how much we love you and how thankful we are to you for all that you are doing for us and for all that we are because of you. And so the only way we can do that, Lord, the only way we can thank you adequately is to accept your love and to put it at work in our lives and to share it with others so others can come to see you and to know you and to experience you like we are doing. And so we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift. And so as we come now to receive this gift, 
We ask that you'll send your Holy Spirit to be on, the, on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. That as we are renewed in your love and grace, we will go from this place and show this community just how much you love them as well. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the body of Christ, broken for you and for me, receive this as a token of his love and his grace and his, his blood shed for you and me, the blood of the new covenant, his grace revealed in a very powerful way to us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, our closing hymn, I think it's very appropriate for a new year also. O oh God, our help in ages past. It's number 117 in your hymnal, and it will be on the screen. And we'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. So let's stand together. O oh God, our help in ages past. I'll tell you, it's beautiful music, but it's kind of strange, isn't it? Singing with that, with recorded music. I know, it takes a little getting used to. Well, thanks for being here this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us and for being part of our time together. You know, many times we think on Sunday morning, ah, it doesn't matter, maybe I'll just skip church today, maybe I'll sleep in, or maybe I'll do something. But I want you to know that every one of you makes a difference in our worship. So it's important that you are here for obvious reasons, but also every one of you makes a difference in how we worship in this church. So yes, it is important that you be here. And so thankful, thank you for your faithfulness and for coming and worshiping with us. As you leave here now, I pray that you'll go in God's strength, that you'll walk with him this week. And remember, for the coming year, you have nothing to fear. Whatever you face, God is going to be there with you He's going to stand tall. He's going to give you the direction. He's going to give you all the strength that you need. And so as you leave here now, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in his peace. Amen. Amen. Don't forget the little basket in the back for the love offering for